Let's continue working towards finding an expression for the electric field of a finite line charge along the z-axis. So I've copied our figure from the previous video as well as the integral expression for our electric field that we had at the end of the video. So obviously this integral looks pretty messy to evaluate, but we can sort of play some games with some geometry and make things a little bit easier. So what I'm about to do, I wouldn't expect you to be able to do on the test, but hopefully this will just provide a little bit more background than what's presented in the textbook. So first of all, let's come up here in this point on our Z axis, which is equal to our observation point. Let's call this point T. And of course it's going to have zero X component, zero Y component, and a Z component, which is equal to Z, the same as our point of observation. From there, what we can do is we can define some angles between our point of observation, the two endpoints of our line A and B, and our differential length DL. And so it's not immediately obvious why this is going to help us, but just sort of take my word for it at the moment, it's gonna make our evaluation a little easier. Okay, so with those lines, let's define angles alpha. So let's say between our our point over here, so between our horizontal line and this bottommost line, we have some angle alpha one. Between our horizontal line and our R vector, we have some angle alpha. And then between this horizontal line and the line connecting our observation point to B, we have some angle alpha two. And so ultimately, again, what we're doing is we're just going to try to rearrange this integral to make things a little bit easier. So in order to do that, let's focus on this triangle right here at the moment with our alpha angle. And then what we're gonna come back and do is we're gonna use our alpha one and our alpha two as limits in our integration. So essentially we're gonna let our alpha angle uh, sort of change between alpha one and alpha two. All right, so let's start by sort of just copying that triangle down here. So of course it's a right triangle and we have that this distance here is z minus z prime. This distance is rho, this distance is r, and here we have our angle alpha. So what we can say then is ultimately we're looking to get all of these values in terms of our alpha. So we want rho, we want z minus z prime, we want our dz, and I think that's pretty much it. So of course we have variations here with rho squared and that z minus z prime quantity squared but that's what we're looking to get in terms of alpha to make that integral easier. So first of all, let's look at our r. So we can say that the magnitude of r, which again is just r, is equal to rho times the secant of alpha, where recall if it's been a minute since you've done trig, uh, like it has for me, remember that the secant is just one over the cosine. Okay, so let's move that out of the way. So just a little side note. So now we've got our r in terms of our alpha, but we still have that rho floating around. So a couple other things that we can do. Um, so of course we can say as well that our rho is equal to r cosine alpha. And we can say that our z minus z prime is equal to r sine of alpha. So our other one that's a little bit trickier is trying to figure out our dz, or sorry, our dz prime, so this term here in our integrand. So what we wanna do for that is we wanna get an expression for z primed. So we can say z primed is going to be equal to, coming back up to our figure, we can say it's going to be this distance from the origin to t, overshot it there. So we can say it's going to be this distance from the origin to t, so let's come down here and say origin to t minus and we're gonna subtract from that our rho tan minus tan theta. So our, our basically our distance um, right here. Okay, and so what we can do with that is we can say minus rho, sorry, not tan theta, tan alpha. So rho tan alpha. And again, this just comes from our, our triangle relationship there. This is our z minus z prime. So what we can do from here, of course, we don't want z prime, but ultimately want dz primed. So we can say that this is equal to 
uh, our OT is going to be constant with respect to D prime or with respect to uh, alpha, excuse me. So that's just going to be uh, go away when we take the derivative. And then we're going to have negative, we're going to have negative rho secant squared of alpha. And from chain rule, we have D alpha. Again, just as another sort of trig aside, D with respect to alpha of tangent is equal to secant squared. Okay, so now we have sort of all of the pieces of the puzzle and we're ready to substitute into our highlighted areas in the equation above. So let's go ahead and do that. And at first it's gonna look like it's even messier than before, but we're gonna see some things are gonna start canceling out and life's gonna start looking a little bit better. So we can say our electric field is equal to, we still have that constant term out front, rho L divided by four pi epsilon naught integral and now our integral remember our limits are going to be in terms of our alphas because ultimately we're going to have a d alpha instead of a dz so let's let this go from our alpha one so we're saying from alpha one is point a up to our alpha two which is corresponding to point b okay so our limit is alpha one to alpha two and now plugging in for our integrand so for our rho we said for rho we have r cosine theta. So this becomes r, sorry, r cosine alpha. I keep wanting to make that a theta for some reason. In our rho direction, plus now our z minus z prime, we said is equal to r sine alpha. And that's in our z direction. And then all of that is multiplied by what was our dz primed. And our DC, dz primed has now become negative rho secant squared of alpha d alpha. And in our denominator, we had these two quantities. So we had rho squared plus z minus z prime squared. We'll notice if we have rho squared minus, or sorry, rather plus our z minus z prime squared, we're gonna have a cosine squared plus sine squared of theta. So remember cosine squared plus sine squared is equal to one. So we factor that out and we're just left with an R squared. So our R squared is then raised to the power of three halves so that ultimately we just get an R cubed term here. All right, so now we can start simplifying. So first of all, we see we can factor out an R term up here, so this R is gonna cancel out with one of our R's here, so we'll be left with R squared in the denominator. So what we can do then is let me, to save some time, just copy this. So let's copy that there, and we can get rid of our R term here. We can get rid of that R cubed, and it becomes R squared. And now we can substitute in for the R squared. So remember we had said up here that our R is equal to rho secant of alpha, so r squared is then going to become rho squared secant squared of alpha. So at this point, we can cancel out this secant squared of alpha, and this rho is going to cancel out with our rho here. All right, so now what we can do is our rho, of course, is not dependent. So our rho down here is not dependent on alpha, so we can pull that out front, and we're left with our electric field is equal to rho L divided by four pi epsilon naught rho times the integral from alpha one to alpha two of cosine alpha in our rho direction plus sine alpha in our z direction times d alpha. Okay, so finally we've arrived at something that is reasonable to integrate. So we can go ahead and do that, and that's going to give us the expression for our electric field due to that finite line charge. So our electric field is equal to, so we still have that constant term out front, rho L divided by four pi epsilon naught rho, and that's going to be multiplied by, and so I seem to have dropped a negative sign here, so we still have this negative sign that was floating there. Um, so we have, now I'm gonna put the negative sign sort of back in here, so this is going to become negative sine of alpha two 
minus sine of alpha 1 in our row direction plus cosine of alpha 2 minus cosine of alpha 1 in our z direction. And so this would be the final result. This is our electric field expression for any point due to that um, finite line charge along the z-axis. And so again, keep in mind, this is dependent on our rho, which is just the perpendicular distance from that finite line charge, as well as our angles alpha 2 and alpha 1, which we can see in this figure here are just related to sort of the, the angle, angular distance between our two endpoints. In this case, they're labeled A and B. In the next video, we're going to come back and take a closer look at this equation and talk about ways that we can approximate this for simpler cases.